Okay, so now I've dragged in 10 images and you can see it's a bit of a mess. Um, I've got my move tool activated and as you can see, when I left click on one of the images or on the canvas, it moves around one image and it can be quite frustrating because say I want to uh, grab that first image that I dropped on, I can't do it. Now, what's actually happened is um, onto the canvas, onto the digital representation of a physical canvas, I have photos positioned, okay? And what I've got to do is I've got to work out a way that I can move each individual one similar to how Hockney would have um, been able to pick up each one of these physical pieces of photo, put another bit of blue tack or something on the bottom and stuck another one down. Um, the way that these things have been imported is by layer. Okay, now if I just go down to my bottom right hand corner and there's the layer palette, you'll see that there's the original background and on top of that I've imported or dropped 10 images and for each image that I've dropped it's created another layer and positioned that on top of it. Now this might help you guys a little bit. Um, my uh, layout's a little bit different from yours already, um, but let's clean up this so it's a little bit easier to use. So just um, a pointer on interface. Each one of these palettes I can grab, I can drag out, and I can drop it. And now that frees up the palette that I'm working with. I can resize these palettes by hovering on the border and pulling it down. I can also expand it by highlighting the little corner and pulling it out. Now many of these I'm not using at the moment. So up in the top right there's a little bar and I can collapse that, icon, that, that series of palettes. I'm not actually using any of my actions at the moment and I'm not using any of my history. So I'll collapse that as well. So the only one that I need to have open really for this little task is layers. And what I'm doing is I'm dragging and dropping that onto the edge of my other collapsed palettes and a blue line has appeared. And if I release, it then sets it next to the other strips of palettes. So it gives me an opportunity now to go in and explain a little bit about the layer palette, which is very important. So by default, when you create a canvas, uh, you'll have a background created. And if I just open up a new one, File, New, the background contents, when you create it, can be altered. So you can have a transparent background, you can give it a color, or you can go with white. For the purpose of this, we'll just go with white. Um, to the uh, left of the little um, icon that shows what it is, you have an eye. If you press the eye, it turns that layer off. Similar to all the other ones. If we want to turn these other layers that have been created off, we just scroll down and we click the eye. You also notice that the background's locked. Okay, so it's locked in position. And what I've done, when it's in blue, you're actually highlighting the one that you want to move around. So, you know, that annoying thing that I said before, whereas say we had the picture with the um, you know, Hockney had the picture with the, the vase on it, or the, the pot plant, sorry. Uh, if he wants to move it, he picks it up and puts it somewhere else. If you need to pick up a particular image, go to the layer that it's been created on, and then you can use the move icon and drag it around. So if you have a locked layer and you want to unlock it, you double click on it. That way it will create a new layer that you can give it a name, and now it's unlocked. Um, if you move something or you, you perform a command that you do not want anymore, there's two ways of going backwards. As in other programs like Microsoft Word, you can press Control Z. The annoying thing with Control Z, now let, I'll, do, I'll perform this with um, turning all the layers off at once. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight layer 1 up to layer 10. And what I did is I clicked the first one, held Shift, clicked the top one and released. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to turn them all off at once by pressing on the little I which indicates layer visibility. Oh, actually it didn't work so it doesn't matter. I'll just go through and do it all at once. <laughs> um, let's say we're going to work just with layer 1. Okay, for now. 
Say I've moved it to there, I don't want to move it, I want to move it back, you can hit Control Z, it jumps back. But you'll notice that you can't go back, back, back through hitting Control Z. Control Z will undo and redo a particular command. Um, this is where the history palette comes quite handy because it actually records all of the moves that you've done. And you can jump back and forward through the stack. Okay, so right now what I'll do is I'll just work with the first three images, so I turn them on. If I want to move layer 1, select highlight layer 1 and move it. If I want to select layer 2, I highlight layer 2, layer 3. So the idea now for me, and this, and you, you'll get into this and you'll be like, oh, where is it? It's moving. But you can see, if you observe down in the layer command, even though it's switched off, I can still move it around. Um, so make sure you've got the right layer selected and then work within that. So I can start to select a few of these, let's say three, and I'll line them up in a particular fashion. And I'm pretty sure I can move together, so I'll highlight the three, yep, I can. I can move these around. Now they're too big for the canvas, I'm not going to make the canvas bigger. What I'm going to do is edit the size of the images. Now there's a transform tool. The easiest way that I can present that to you is by just turning them all off and, I, and I'll highlight layer 1 and I'll just use layer 1 to show you. So I can go edit, in the edit menu there's a free transform and if you hold it over transform there's another menu that pops up that lets you transform by scaling, rotating, skewing, distorting, etc, etc. So just click through some of those and have a bit of a test. Um, I'm going to do free transform because what it does by icon it lets me, holding the left mouse button, rotate things, scale them, and if you'll notice that if you grab the corner and you scale, it scales disproportionately. If I hold shift, I'll just undo that using control Z, if I hold shift, I can scale at proportion. So you can see that right now, what's happening is the actual number of pixels are being reduced or enlarged. As a general rule, don't enlarge because what that does is it, it will duplicate particular pixels. It doesn't increase resolution because it never existed there. Um, but if you downsize something, uh, that's fine because you're downsampling an image. But once you hit enter, all of those pixels, the extra pixels in the larger version are gone. So just be cautious of that. So what I'm going to do is I'll turn on those three layers again. I'll move layer one into position. I'll move layer 2 into position, and I'll move layer 3 into position. And then I can highlight all three. I can go to Edit, down to Free Transform, or to Scale Transform, or one of the other options. Hold Shift, and Scale. Okay, I can now rotate all of them together. And I need to end the command. Now, I know that I've got about 40 pitches, so I'm going to scale it a bit further and then hit enter. So down sampling is great, up sampling is terrible. I can grab that one image and I can hit control T as the transform, the edit, the transform tool and I can rotate that around. Now you can see that there's a hierarchy here, right? And you might want to start getting into layering name conventions. So layer 1 shouldn't be called layer 1, maybe it should be called gutter or something. So I can double click or click light, like I think what you do is you Double click slowly, that usually opens it up. You can see that that sits behind the others. What I can do here, ignore that for a sec, I'll bring that one up to the third highest rank. You can see now that whatever sits at the top of the layer list sits at the front. Whatever sits closest to the background sits at the back. Okay, so maybe I want the gutter to be a bit bigger. You know, up sampling a little bit's okay, so I'm just going to do that. Uh, I can grab layer 3, I can rotate that into position. And as far as layer 2, I might just keep that in the second position as well. So as far as a compositional exercise, I'm going to see if I can play with the eaves. And what I'll do now is I'll just pause it and I'll come back when I've um, downsampled a few. I'll reiterate really quickly on the transform um, and layering and then uh, I'll push on and finish it. So what I've done is I've just 
downsampled layer 4, 5 and 6. I'm again lining up the eave. Um, it's quite nice because you can see that the colour is slowly fading and there is a little bit of movement from the point of view of me, the photographer. Um, I suggest, strongly suggest that you expand on that. But what I'm going to do, you can see that again, I'm going to need a lot more room. I don't want to alter the size of the canvas. So I'm just going to select all of these, hit Control T, hold Shift so I scale at proportion, and I strongly suggest that you don't change the proportions of your images. Scale it down even further, hit Enter. Move it into position. And I still haven't used any other tool icons than that one, and I don't think until Photoshop Part 2 we need to. If you know the name of the layer that you're working with, you can, um, or if you've named some of them, you can right click on the canvas and it will let you select quickly and save you from navigating over to the layers all the time. Okay, so what I've done is I've um, just rescaled level layer 7, 8, 9 and 10. And when I was taking the photos, I went left to right. When I got to layer, or layer photo number 7, I started going right to left. So now I'm just selecting the two groups. I've got one set that's moving together, another set that's moving together. Now, those sitting in front kind of kill it, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag all of those layers down to the bottom and put them underneath nice and neatly. Now, if it starts to get messy, you can start to highlight. Within the layer control, you can create a group. So I I've made a group and I can put layers 6 through 3 into that group. So just down the bottom, this little icon, it looks like a folder, it's called group. If you want to create a blank layer, which we'll get into in the second round, that's there. So I can pop that all into one group, and now I can turn it off and on together. And the second lot, I'll pop those into a group. Hold shift, drag and drop the layers into group two. I guess the second icon that will help you is um, the um, zoom one down the bottom. So some of the navigation um, icons are down the bottom of the toolbar. If we hit zoom, you'll see that a little your icon turns into a magnifying glass with a plus. If you click, it zooms in. Now if you hold alt, it turns into a negative and you can zoom out. A shortcut to zoom in and out is control plus goes in, control negative, goes out. So the quicker you can get with the shortcuts, the better. So if you zoom into a white patch of your canvas, you can use the pan icon to move up. Otherwise, a better option would be to use the space bar and then pan around the document, like so. So I'll zoom back out, but this is the area of the canvas that I want. Now we have a palette that also helps you navigate. All right there's a little navigator icon. So I can actually zoom in and out using that over here and I can move around the document. So the little slider at the bottom helps you slide in and out and then you can pan around your document just using dragging a little red square. Okay, so what I just did is I went through and just in case you do it, I opened up all the files at once and you can see across the top, it's just stacked them all through and it actually goes off the screen. To actually select individually uh, which, pit, which image you want to work with, you can hit Window and it will list them. So I'm going to go back to my first A3 canvas and an easy way to work is just to drag each one of these images across, drag it onto the canvas and then minimize or close it. Drag the image across, grab it and drag it in. To save a little bit of time, I'm just going to grab the last five layers that I've imported. Uh, Control T to transform, or I'll just go down to free transform. Grab it, hold shift, drag them all down as one group so it's easily be easily managed. Okay, so I've just added another two subsets. Um, well, organized them, I should say. Group three, I reverse the order of them because as I took it down it was in the reverse so the gutter I want to give more uh, prominence than 
the uh, the edges. Uh, then when I went to group four, this one, I wanted to show the movement of me kind of laying this trajectory. And um, you can see that now I'm starting to see it more as a holistic um, image. I can still move some of these individually. So even with the with some of these ones here, you can see that um, I'm starting to link them up again with the green. And I want to keep it abstract. I want to see the canvas between it. I want to see the roof twice. Okay, I want to, I want to interact with the picture in a way uh, that you would if you were almost blinking and, re and you, as your brain reinterprets particular elements. And again, I'm in the same position. I hit control negative to zoom out and I'm already taking up too much of my canvas and I do want edges on my canvas as well. So I highlight all of those. I go down and hit free transform or control T and I'm going to shrink it down again.